Hello everybody from the top of Nahoa. We're currently in the U.S. Virgin Islands here in a port called Charlotte Amelie. It is on St. Thomas. It's where the cruise ships come. It's where there's stores, grocery stores, chandleries, boat stores, restaurants, and entertainment. And we're about to set sail on our second circumnavigation. We are going to go sailing. Today? Tomorrow. Do you want to go sailing? Yeah. Do you like sailing? Yeah. We're going to go sailing for a week. Is that okay? Yeah. What are you going to do when you go sailing, Willa? Rock TV. <laughs> Is that why you like sailing? Yeah. What are you going to do, Bodhi, when you go sailing? Go fishing. Go fishing? Yeah. Okay. I'm Ben. That's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Fishing competition, man. I think I win. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. After 38 countries, over 40,000 nautical miles, and welcoming two kids along the way, we are on our second lap around the world. It's definitely harder cruising with kids, but it's really rewarding and it's been a lot of fun having them along for the ride. That's what this is all about. Meeting people, seeing beautiful places, and the beautiful world that we live in. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we live a life at sea. I have no idea what's gonna happen. After nine years of sailing around the world, we are setting sail again towards Panama. The first stretch is gonna take about seven days. It's gonna take us one day to get through the Panama Canal and then it's gonna be 25 to 30 days across the Pacific. So that right down there is a boat called Every Saturday. The ladies have decided they're gonna trade some sourdough starter while I sit here up at the top of the mast. Sourdough bread overseas when you're offshore is so delicious and Amber happens to have the best sourdough starter. So I'm gonna go catch it on the back step. Wish me luck. Oh, look at this, our dinghy. Should I maybe tighten that up? Do the handoff. Thank you, got it, got it. Stay reversed, reverse. Oh, you can hit the dinghy. This is my sourdough starter. Thank you, Amber and Brandon. Let's go put that in the fridge. The sourdough starter has been transferred. Um, we're gonna have to say goodbye to some really good friends. There is something that we have never talked about before on the show. And I think it's because we all think cash is king, but the reality is that the mental game is most of the time running the show. We had a therapist before we set sail by the name of Daniel. Yes, he watches the show and he's probably smiling right now because he was absolutely instrumental in setting us free. He helped us sort out not just our relationship stuff, but also our own personal hangups. Without him, we'd probably still be dreaming about this lad adventure instead of living it. It's amazing how much baggage we carry around, all of us, without even realizing it. Those limiting beliefs, childhood wounds, or self-sabotaging patterns can really weigh you down and keep you in port. I know, corny, but it's true. Here's the thing, therapy isn't just for couples on the brink of a breakup or for individuals in the midst of a crisis. It's a powerful tool for anyone who wants to live a more fulfilling and authentic life. That's where BetterHelp comes in, the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp makes it easy to get matched with a licensed therapist who meets your needs and preferences. You can have sessions via phone, video chat, or even on just messages, whatever works best for you. And if you're not vibing with your therapist, no worries. You can just switch to a different therapist at any time. Personally, we don't see much downside to giving BetterHelp a try. Quite the opposite. It could be the start of your own personal growth and transformation. And go to betterhelp.com slash sailing or simply select sailing Nahoa at the sign up for a special discount off your first month of therapy. The future you will thank you. Hi. You got a rope in your head. <laughs> it's kind of part of life of living on a boat. There's always lines. No, they're not called ropes, Ben. They're lines. Lines and if you live on Nahoa, there seems to be always laundry in the background, which I've been asked to take down. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of laundry. 
<laughs> We've been doing a lot of laundry, but um, <laughs> we're about to set sail for Panama of all places. Second time around. What do you think? Are you excited? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no? Uh, yeah, I mean, I am. The passage down there is always kind of hectic. It gets super windy as you get near uh, Colombia and Panama. So that part I'm not looking forward to. It's going to be rough and windy and and sketchy as always. Um, nothing we haven't seen lately, but uh, <laughs> you know. If you sail a lot, or even if you don't sail a lot, you always compare it to your worst experience. How bad can it be? And it can't be, it's probably not gonna be as bad as that time we surfed down waves on the way to off the coast of Brazil. I'm not really as concerned as I was eight years ago when we first set sail. The passage that we're about to do is going to be the yeah. first leg that we started nine years ago. Nine yeah, years I, ago. I know, it's crazy. It's like max 30, 33 knots is supposed to be the max. It is a few days out, the forecast, so you never know, but sometimes things change. Your mic looks like a protrusion coming off your boobies. We're working on these mics, people. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> but what are we doing to get ready before we set sail, before we go offshore? It's pretty normal stuff. We're doing laundry. I have a can of dry lube out. This is for lubing all the blocks and all the friction points where the lines run through. I'm just gonna go up the mast, check at the top, um, checking for any kind of frayed ropes, any wires that should that are broken, that should not be broken, and, and just generally just cleaning up the boat. We were supposed to leave this morning. It's clearly gonna be this afternoon. I'm gonna pop in and you know buy some bananas for that good luck on passage. What's gonna be the hardest part, I think, of leaving here is that we've met such a good group of friends, Brandon and Edinburgh, and they're on Everyday Saturday. They have a, an excellent uh, Instagram account, and they used to do YouTubes. And we've been hanging out with Paradox, and there's so many other brilliant people here that we just kind of just met. And we're also, um, just leaving so this used to be my old bosun's chair so a bosun's chair is um, a hard piece of wood that you sit on uh, and then you get hoisted up we we've come a long ways i think in bosun's chairs and i'm about to throw this one out because i really didn't feel safe on it a uh, few reasons one if you were to go inverted you would probably fall out there's no straps to hold your legs in two it's just if you have to go up um, while you're out sailing i think that would be really hard so, I have invested <laughs> in this contraption. <laughs> uh, let me get it sorted, hold on. That's the bottom. Yeah. Take this off for a sec. It is a much more secure harness. Let me show you. So, I really am worried about my laundry. So this harness has leg straps, it's got shoulder straps. So if you were ever to go inverted, you would not fall out. Um, it also has the hard seat at the back. What I have different now is I have a shock absorber. If uh, the main halyard were to break, I can attach um, a secondary line to another halyard, which goes up, but it doesn't come down. So it's kind of a nice thing. So what I want to do today is go up, I want to check all the wires for the standing rigging, I want to check the running rigging at the top, and put a new flag halyard on. We haven't had a flag halyard for a long time. So Ben's supposed to be going up the mast, but he's doing like a million other things, so I'm asking if he's ready. Are you ready? Yeah, let's give it a try. Okay, you can sit down. Okay, I'm ready. All right, let's go. Do you want me to go up a little more or do you want to check it there first? I'm scared. Stop. Whoa. So up here is where our Code Zero and our spinnaker attach, or that's where the block attaches. I think I found an issue. See how loose that is? So on the way down, what I do is I clean what's called the mass track. This track right here. The better it slides and the easier it is to throw in a reef or to pull up the mainsail if you're uh, shaking out a reef. So I always clean the stuff on the way down. How's it hanging? Going up again. <laughs> <laughs> Second time a charm. You got to come back down, get your tools, all that stuff. 
but I think he's figuring out his new harness. I think it's gonna be, I think it's good. I'm, I'm feeling more com comfortable with it. Good? Yeah, all good. Keep going. So this is the issue. We have two rivets that have fallen out right there and right there. So this thing is moving. On top of that, this shackle is really worn. What I've done is I've put a new shackle on right there and I've put new rivets in right there and there and this thing is solid. This thing doesn't move anymore. I'm gonna replace this block when I get to Panama. It's pretty old, but this should hold more than enough to get down there. You ready to go around the world again, Ashley? <laughs> she said sure. Pretty good life, pretty good wife. All right, let's go back down. Your hair looks excellent, Ben. Way better than mine. All right, it is time to install another alternator on our starboard side. So this side runs our water maker, our desalination plant. So the things that use the most power on a sailboat are air conditioning, uh, a desalination plant, so fresh water makers, because it takes a lot of power to convert salt water into fresh, and induction cooking. And we have 900 amp hours of lithium batteries to store all the power we make during the day. We have 2.4 kilowatts of solar, that's a lot. And our desalination plant, our water maker, is powered off of our diesel engine. So it's not even using any electricity. Yet we struggle on cloudy days to keep up with our power demands. And we also have propane cooking so that again, doesn't draw as much electricity on top of the induction cooking when we can use it. We're gonna have a diesel. We're gonna have diesel engines on the Nahoa 55. And what I'm doing today is I'm actually installing a new alternator to run off of this engine because the old one has um, shit its pants. And the reason for that is because the desalination plant, the water maker runs off this engine as well. So when I'm making fresh water, I may as well make power to put into the battery bank. So that's tonight's project. Um, I'll leave the whole hybrid, dreamy idea stuff to other people to test, but in my mind, that is not something to test on the high oceans when you're creating an expedition style vessel. You go with proven technologies, diesel, and if you say that's not green, well, we're building only one boat. That is probably the most green thing you can do because you can recycle it. Unlike carbon fiber boats, unlike GRP boats, which just get mulched up in a big mulcher at the end of their life or end up on the bottom of the ocean. End of rant, I'm going to work. I guess that's what we're saying is our thinking and our plans for our new boat are going to be based on what has been proven and not bleeding edge technology. And that's a choice we make. It's not right. It's not the choice that other people are making and we totally support them because we, we need people to go off and test these things and figure out what works and what doesn't work so that it can be amended, adapted, iterated on to create something that is truly amazing. And we will get there. We will 100% get there. What we believe in uh, for expedition style sailing is not going bleeding edge. So you don't have breakdowns and two, having systems and components on your boat that are really high quality, but not having multiple of them, but carrying spares for those really high quality systems. Um, so you know the system, and the reason for that is you know the system, um, you, you've learned it, you don't need to maintain two systems, you carry spares for that one system, uh, water makers, autopilots, whatever it may be, um, but it's one really good system with spares, and you learn that system, and that's kind of our methodology. That's Ben's philosophy. I'm going to do the dishes. He's going to install an alternator. I think I'll clean up a little bit and then I might read my book while he installs an alternator because no one is going to bed until that's done because our engines are right there under the bed. I'm very excited for the new boat to have no engines under the bed. Uh, that'll be a nice change. There are so many things we're looking forward to um, with the next boat. And what's amazing is all the choices that actually go in to all the systems and everything after you have a design. And that is an epic process.
process within itself. So you buy the plans from your designer, and then after that, you have to figure out all the systems. Tired. It's fine. It's working. Yay! Do you think the water maker will work? Water maker's not hooked up yet. <laughs> yes, that's okay, considering it's like 11 o'clock at night and the bed's down so I can go to bed. Yay! <laughs> It's all good then. It's all good. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Well, good night, guys. Uh, you know, thanks for following along and staying up with us till 11 o'clock at night tonight. We'll see you in the morning. The last thing we do before we set sail is double check the weather Hooray! one more time. This is where we are, right up here, which is the U.S. Virgin Islands. That's the Panama Canal down there. And this is what we're looking at. So this is a wind map. We can switch to gust map and you can see there's quite a bit stronger gusts and where we're going to run into a lot of wind is off the coast of Colombia right down here. This is Colombia and there's a compression zone up here. You can see our boat up here on the first day and we basically have pretty good sailing until one day in. <laughs> Then we'll be sitting in 18 to 21 knots. That's not too bad, dead downwind. 21 to 27 knots, so it gets a bit windier. And then once we get off the coast of Colombia, we'll be in 26 gusting 32 knots. So that's pretty windy. We look at Cape, and Cape basically shows you where there could be squall activity. So when it's yellow like this, there's a lot of squall activity. Up here where it's purple, there's very little squall activity. We look at waves, you can see right here, uh, there's bigger waves as well. So they're at four meters and an eight second period. That's a two to one, uh, which is pretty steep waves. So these are all kind of things that we look at. You looking forward to this? No. <laughs> no, why not? Over because 30 knots is too windy for you? It's just not comfortable over 30 knots. It doesn't matter. I mean, unless you're behind an island and the water's smooth and flat. Uh, there's gonna be anywhere where there's 30 knots there's gonna be big waves which means you're gonna be like surfing down giant waves like it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of yucky it's gonna be kind of awful our rule of thumb for wave height is a three to one ratio so if it's a four what was it a four meter wave is that what it was saying that's pretty big oh, no. we would want a 12 second period though so peak to peak it would take 12 seconds for one peak to pass and then the next one to pass. So we're going to only have a two to one ratio, which means the waves are going to be a lot steeper like this. It's going to be freaking awful. It's going to be intense, but it'll be fun. It'll make for good filming and you guys will come along for the ride. It's going to be a rough one, guys. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, let's go. Bye, Amber. Bye, Cohen. In aviation, there's a term called point of no return. This is reached when, for instance, a plane flies beyond half its fuel capacity or enters a fog bank, making return impractical and impossible. Similarly, as the shoreline fades behind us, we too are crossing our own point of no return. Hours spent sailing downwind render the thought of an upwind return not just daunting, but unfeasible. That right there is a super nice example of a squall. You have rain coming down in the middle. You have uh, probably winds coming down right beside the middle, like downdrafts. Squall that's happened at the end of a day after a lot of convection, a lot of heat, where the clouds have gone up. And eventually at the end of the day, like right now, it all comes pouring down with rain and wind. The problem is at night, you can't see these coming often, so uh, we always reduce sail at night and take it easy. Our reality condenses to a singular existence at sea, where self-reliance, command of our vessel, and ownership of our fate are paramount. Okay, you ready to go fishing, buddy? Yeah. Okay, you hold the lure. Okay, you gonna throw it? Yeah. Go for it. Over here. Oh, wait, no. Cody, my man, you're a little rusty. Our camaraderie deepens, quality time expands, and it's as though the myriad of distractions of terrestrial life dissipate, dissolving into the ocean's expanse within mere minutes or hours.
We just finished our first night out here offshore. Okay, in the last like 20 minutes, it's just picked up to insane speed. Uh, we're, we're like 35, gusting 39, and we're surfing down these waves at 15 knots again. And I'm actually just kind of tired of it and really just want it to end. Um, anyway, check this out out here, it's crazy. 